the last topic of today's lecture is this idea of returns to scale. So returns to scale, it's the, the, this last idea of how do firms decide to expand. When you decide to expand, basically the idea is that you want to produce more, to have more sales and presumably more profits. So you hire more inputs, you hire more workers, you buy more land, whatever it needs to, you do, you do. And you have to consider, obviously, the marginal product. But the marginal product is related to this idea of returns to scale. And as it reads in the slide, the returns to scale describes how the output changes with respect to the way those input changes. Not one input at a time, like with a marginal product, but all your inputs at once. In other words, if I decide to double all my inputs, will I be able to double the overall final product I sell? Or will it be more than that? or less than that. If I have to cut my inputs in half because there's a recession, will my final output be also cut in half? That's the idea of returns to scale. At what proportion will my final product grow, positive or negative, based on how I decide to grow all my inputs at the same time? So returns to scale basically looks like this. So I've literally written all the math in the slide because I would normally do this in the, in the blackboard, but no se puede. So consider a particular technology, Cobb Douglas, six proportions, perfect substitute, like a gusten, no importa, it's general form. And this is a, a production function that implies N puede ser lo que han, cinco inputs, whatever they are. So you have five different inputs. So what is basically what happens if I decide to double all the in, all the inputs? So the mathematical way of doing this, as you see, in los problemas que tendrán eh, in your problem set, is that you have the particular production function, la que sea, and everywhere you have an input, you basically decide to multiply that for a particular constant k, and that constant k is pues lo que quieres. O sea, in other words, doubling your inputs, K is dos. If you want to triple your inputs, K is three. If you want to multiply your inputs by seven, K would be seven. So what you do is that, what happens to my production function if I, instead of using only one unit of X1, I use seven units of X1 and seven units of X2 and K units of X3. K is any number you decide to expand positively or negatively. And the question is, will that expansion, the lado izquierdo de la ecuación, be equivalent to just multiplying my original production por ese número? If that is the case, doubling all inputs doubles the output level, then this particular function or this particular technology exhibits constant returns to scale. Basically, you decide to double your inputs, and you actually reach double the output. Eso es constant returns to scale. Questions regarding this idea. So Diego was referring to another case. In this case, it's similar to a parabola because many times, so what happens here is that you basically, the, the, the left side of the equation or the inequality, you multiply every input you have times a constant k, Doubling, for example, si fuera k igual a dos. So, doubling all inputs less than doubles the output level. This is a smaller than proportional growth. And this is called decreasing returns to scale. As you can see in the x-axis, this firm or this management, the managers decided to increase, to duplicate, duplicate the number of inputs. But as you see, the actual level of output, but actually duplicating the initial production. This is why this firm shows decreasing returns to scale. Crecer para una empresa que shows decreasing returns to scale is harder because it implies that you have to more than increase your costs para poder incrementar tus ventas. Last case. What happens when you have and increasing returns to scale, el mejor de todos los mundos. This basically shows you that if I decide to duplicate the number of inputs I have, and I multiply x1, x2, x3 by k, in this 
k is, k is 2. The overall output is more than that, which means that doubling all inputs generated a result in which the overall output is more than double. The growth is greater than proportional. Increasing returns to scale that look more or less like this. In the x-axis, you see the duplication of the input levels, but the overall result is the actual level of output that came about when you duplicated the inputs. You could duplicate your production without having to duplicate your costs. Questions before I move on to the next couple of slides que son, expliquen un poco esta tecnología. The next couple of slides que ya no lo voy a presentar ahorita are essentially examples para los distintos cases, ¿no? Like perfect substitute example y les hago yo la mate de cómo se hace. Like here, ¿no? Así, fixed proportions. Y entonces, aquí viene la explicación de cómo hacer fixed proportions, la explicación intuitiva. And then, the math. Este, y luego viene Cobb Douglas. Cobb Douglas is a very particular function. Can exhibit all the different uh, returns to scale. But depending on qué te den los exponentes aquí, si está acá elevada a la 1, it's just like constant returns to scale, ¿no? O sea, K a la 1, elevada a la 1 es igual a K por Y, like in this case. But if you have more than one or less than one en la suma de tus exponentes, you have constant or, or decreasing or increasing returns to scale. So the shortcut para Cobb Douglas type functions in terms of returns to scale is that if you, since the beginning of your production function, add up the exponents, if it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. Question before I move to the like end of class evaluation, porque ya nos pasamos tantito de tiempo. 